The supercar market has been very changeable recently with prices shifting from boom to bust. In today's video, we're going to be looking into why there's been such a polarizing change in the marketplace. Previous to this current deflation in the car market, we had a situation where the car market was booming. It was trending really high. We had the situation in 2020 where COVID hit us quite hard. Now there was a perception that we were gonna have a big downturn in the economy, but that just never happened. People weren't able to spend on going out on entertainment and on luxury cruises and on going on holiday and eating out. So what they decided to do was put that money into cars. So they decided to change out their cars for new cars to upgrade their cars or buy supercars or buy luxury goods such as Rolexes and watches. And this is why we had a substantial boom, a substantial spike in the luxury watches market um, because people were putting their money into luxury watches and they were hoping that they were gonna invest in that type of a, a commodity. They were gonna have a situation where they could wear that commodity, they could wear a nice luxury watch, and then downstream they could get their money out of that commodity and hopefully be on a little bit elevated so they could actually make money on that commodity. So we had a situation where people were looking to buy new cars or buy supercars, but we had the secondary situation where COVID had hit third party countries that supplied parts for these cars. And that meant that because those countries were in lockdown, they couldn't, people couldn't be working in factories, etc., to create those parts. So those parts weren't available. So that meant that those cars had extended wait times for those cars to be delivered to customers. So what they decided to do was either go to the secondhand market to instead of buying a new car or go to a secondhand market to buy a car for the interim period until their new car arrived. So of course the secondhand market started booming because supply and demand. There was a high demand on people looking for the amount of cars that are available. There's only a certain limited amount of cars available, which usually supply demand. But in this circumstance, because there was an elevated amount of people, it meant that the car market started spinning up as well and started to spike high. So we had this, this situation where car prices were being elevated substantially. And you actually had a situation where some people who had purchased a car previous to this boom period, they were, they were having the dealers call them up and say, look, we'll offer you overs on your car. And they'd only had the car for a few months and they'd been able to put some mileage on it. So they'd been able to enjoy that car. And they were offered overs by the dealers to buy the car back because of course the dealers knew they could sell it on for a profit on top of what the profit that they were paying the customer to buy the car back. It was a real bizarre circumstance that we're in, but this is the usual situation we're purchasing. It's always supply and demand. If there's a big demand for something, then the prices in general will elevate. And if there's a low demand, the prices will come down. Of course, this hyped market just couldn't be sustained. It wasn't sustainable. It had to drop at some point. Downstream now, we're seeing a downturn in the economy. So of course, all the prices, because there's a low demand for these cars, all these prices are dropping down now. So we're coming down off that spike and the prices are either leveling out or dropping a little bit lower as well which is a very interesting market so we've had the boom, boom period and now we're on the, the lower end of that we're on the polar opposite of that boom period where we've got the devaluation of prices with that sort of a boom period with such an aggressive excessive spike in commodities in that way you're always going to have a reckoning at some point so it's always going to be leveled out or come down lower than the previous base levels were if you enjoyed the video so far please give the video a thumbs up give it a like very important for the channel and if you like our style of content please think about subscribing now back to the video so why are we in such a deflated car market at the moment what's happened well many things have happened of course we've been hit by a downturn in the economy the downturn in the economy has meant that interest rates have considerably elevated this means that people may have come to the circumstance where they've had to remortgage it may be that their mortgages have come to a point where they've had to remortgage during this period that means that their mortgage because of the interest rates have been elevated have substantially increased so some people's mortgages have doubled or trebled on a monthly basis this means that they haven't had the money available to put into cars and any nice cars that they've had, they've, been, they've maybe had to sell to be able to release some funds to be able to fund paying their mortgage. And this in turn has meant that finance agreements, of course, have been elevated because the interest rates impact the APR on finance agreements. So, of course, you've had the situation where we had great periods of low interest rates and therefore finance was very easy, which helped people to purchase the supercars during the COVID period, during, during the boom period. But now, of course, we've got the polar opposite where interest rates are very high high for finance that means then of course that people's monthlies 
uh, have increased. So if they've come to the period where they've had to refinance their bubbles, depending on what sort of finance package they've got, it, mean, it may mean that they've had to refinance the bubble on their cars. And that could mean that their finance monthlies have, have doubled or trebled on a monthly basis. And therefore they're looking at selling their cars instead of keeping them, instead of refinancing the bubble, they're po probably looking at a situation of selling those cars and releasing that cash available because they just haven't got the disposable income to spend on those elevated monthlies. And of course, if they've been impacted by having to remortgage and they're financing cars, then you've got that double whammy where you've got the situation where they're paying more on their mortgage on a monthly basis and they're paying a lot more on their monthly finance agreement on their cars. So they've got to release cash in some way. So that means more cars are coming onto the market. And because there's more cars coming onto the market, less people buying, of course, it's going to drop the prices, supply and demand again, lower demand. With, and more cars being available in the marketplace means that when people are trying to sell their cars, there's more competition, there's more cars available, therefore the prices will drop. And this is what we're seeing at the moment. We're seeing the prices considerably dropping. Now added to all that, of course, you've got the circumstance where we're in a winter period. Prices always drop around the winter period. Nobody's gonna be looking at buying a supercar or a hypercar or even the top end sports car during the winter period. That just doesn't happen. So what people are doing, of course, is they're just not buying. They're not buying because of the winter period. So that's impacting the situation as well. So that's adding to the low demand on the current marketplace. There's been other circumstances have also contributed to this characteristic in the marketplace. You've got a situation whereby people are losing their jobs because small businesses are going bust and you've got large businesses that are looking to downscale a bit and they're getting rid of people, they're getting rid of their employees. So of course some people are having their disposable income absolutely killed and it's just they're moving into survival time rather than actually buying luxury goods. They're just trying to survive, you know, paying, paying their mortgage, putting food on the table, just being able to heat their houses. Of course, we've got this other characteristic as well. We've got an excessive increase in the supply of energy services. This cause is impacted by the situation we have with the conflict with Russia and Ukraine. We get a substantial amount of our gas in the UK from Russia. And of course, we're not being able to do that at the moment. So we have to pay more for gas as a commodity from third parties, from other third parties. So energy rises has also been a contributing factor. And of course, energy rises has also been a contributing factor in increasing the cost of parts manufacture. So parts are costing more to manufacture. So the price of new cars has been elevated because the cost of parts has been increased, which are supplied for those cars. So that all impacts the downturn in the economy and of course impacts the downturn in the car market. And of course, cars that are gonna be more impacted by this are the hyped cars. So when I talk about hyped cars, and I'm not talking about hyper cars, I'm talking about hyped cars such as the 992 GT3 and the 992 GT3 RS and cars like 296s and such like, those are gonna be more impacted by this circumstance because they were the hyped cars in the marketplace at the time. So they were already peaked, they're already elevated over and above the normal standing point of the other cars in the car market. Market, these were all excessively spiked so they had further to fall and we've also got this situation now whereby car insurance has become extremely expensive we've got an elevation in car insurance prices now 21 percent over last year and these are from figures from the association of british insurers so all these characteristics have an impact on the deflated car market it's supply and demand there's going to be more cars available because people are going to be selling their cars to get out of them because they can't afford to buy them or can't afford to pay for them anymore. And there's going to be less people going to be purchasing cars. Therefore, there's more cars, less people to buy them, so less demand. So the car prices are going to have to drop to be able to sell those cars to a small captive audience that are going to be available to purchase those cars. This all takes its toll on the car market and brings car market prices down. It's not all doom and gloom though. The economy seems to be stabilizing now and with some supercars showing the signs of a possible recovery, maybe now is the time to buy your dream supercar.